one of the fascinating subplots in this season that promises to be one of the best in living memory. Valentino Rossi on that pole position ahead of Sete Gibinau and Max Biaggi. Feel this tension. Round one, MotoGP 2004, the most exciting season in 55 years of Grand Prix motorcycle racing is underway. Now! Slip from Max Biaggi, good start from, uh, I believe it's Sete Gibinau, no it's Rossi, Rossi's got the whole shot into turn one from Sete Gibinau, from Max Biaggi, we've got Alex Hoffman stuck on the grid, he's dead last going into turn one, does everybody get through safely, yes they do, Valentino Rossi leads his motorcycle Grand Prix at the moment on the goal while Yamaha, but Sete Gibinau is up there, and so is Marco Melandri in fifth position. Whoa, there's a name we didn't mention enough earlier on, yeah, Hoffman, maybe justification for the three abroad, the three abroad uh, grid formation. Everybody's got through safely, but Rossi's got the whole shot. Now he's got to keep the measure of the cool Michelin tyres in the early part of this Grand Prix. They're running with a full fuel tank. The weight is relatively for these prototype ultra technical machines. It's relatively heavy. Rossi, Gibbonau, Biaggi, Hayden, Melandri, Colin Edwards on the Honda. Back on a Honda with a Castrol sticker. What did we expect? Hey, Kenny Roberts up in seventh in front of Gabba Rossi, who's the only man using a 17-inch front wheel, by the way. We'll get round to tyres later as this race shakes out. We've got a long way to go. 28 laps on on the back section, the sheer speed of Max, Max. Biaggi goes ahead of Sete Gibinau. So it's the Yamaha from the Camel Honda, from the Movie Star Honda. Hayden in fourth position holds his qualifying place. Well, Max needed that pass on Gibinau because he knows that if Rossi goes, the job's going to be all but impossible. Max putting in an early effort to try and latch onto the back wheel of Rossi's Yamaha. He can only see Valentino Rossi ahead of him as they come on to the home straight to complete lap one of 28 here in South Africa. The din, the physical annoy, uh, assault on your senses by these machines has got to be heard to be believed. And they are going to get louder as the year goes on. Nicky Hayden holding station there, but there here comes Kenny Roberts with the Bridgestone Suzuki. Roberts down in seventh position, but Melandri, what a rocket start from the number 33 former 250 champion. Well, we knew he's good. We knew he was good. He rode beautifully in Australia last year until the thing chucked him off. But it's a very different motorbike he's got under him. Oh, Look Nicky. at Nicky Hayden. Nicky Hayden, did he lose his line there through the right hander? He somehow got it back and has piled that fourth position. Rossi, right into the lead of this race, Randy. He means to continue where he left off. I can't think of any time that Valentino's got a start like that because uh, he's normally always running third or fourth on the opening laps and trying to make uh, his way up front but uh, he, he made a great start the clutch actually he, the bike actually jumped and leaped a little bit and I thought he wasn't going to get it I thought said they got the little bit of advantage but then it hooked up and it just took off and boy we've got a race now we have indeed and of course the thing about the launch control devices on these machines is that they really can launch you off the start line it's all worked well for all the main men Rossi leads from Biaggi we're looking back at the Camel Honda. It'll be fascinating to see what happens as the race wears on because the one question we could not possibly answer before the start of the year was how will this Yamaha behave on worn tyres? Take a look at the opening lap. Valentino crossed the line with a 33.9, then Max took it away with the fastest lap with a 33.6. Set to Jim now with a 33.8, nothing in it. It's early days yet, but as they work their way through, it's the leading trio who have begun to make a bit of a breakaway. And as you said this morning, Randy, Max Biaggi is, is having the pace to stay with Valentino Rossi because yesterday, Randy, it was Max who put in the most consistent laps. For sure. And uh, what uh, Valentino's going to try to do in this race, of course, now that he's got the whole shot, he's got the lead, is set a pace that he could try to pull away from everybody because he doesn't want to have to do battle with these two Hondas. He wants to try to just do battle right himself let alone anybody and of course conserve his tires because that is the big unknown on this Yamaha you're, you're talking about conserving tires when we're already into the 33s no <laughs> what we don't well I'm groping okay, towards they, Randy said they was running just a little bit wide going on to there and that's an important corner because this leads onto the back straightaway and then you see the series of right-handers again look at Max close up on speed going into the end of the back straightaway 
It's the one unknown here, Randy, how that Yamaha will behave on worn tyres. Yes, I think it is for a, a lot of people. Uh, I, you know, we've seen a lot of this qualifying where you see a run of uh, 10 or so laps and then the bike stop, but they've been taking the tyres out, putting them in the second bike and running them again to get some race distance on it. But, you know, race distance uh, is a lot different when you're in the thick of action. Now, we believe we've got a bit of scoop news up here in the British Eurosport uh, commentary box together with uh, Randy Mamola, who's been running around like a mad thing all morning. Randy, we, we heard Max Biaggi say after qualifying yesterday that he utilised a big rear tyre. And that got us all scurrying away into the backs of the garages. And we reckon that there's a, there's a special rear tyre from Michelin that is advantageous to corner speed, Randy. Yes, it was quite uh, funny because you know that we've been listening to uh, the uh, Honda boys talking about new chassis, old chassis, uh, 04 and 03, and uh, something to do with the new swing arm. And then Max came out with this thing saying, I'm going to use the 04 chassis because it seems to work be better with the bigger tire. I seem to get more corner grip. And that's the uh, Honda's comment, and of course, that's Michelin's comment. So I went to, of course, to find Pierre Dupasquet, who is the head of all Michelin racing department, Formula One, and of course, MotoGP. And I said, What's going on here? And he says, listen, we're not non-stop developing. And uh, we continue to do the things and move forward. I said, but Max says this tire's bigger. Can you tell me where it's bigger? And he says, absolutely Randy. Not. There we go. Oh, this, yes, he's through. And that was coming, wasn't it? Max has been all over him for half a lap. There goes, he's coming back. Oh. No, across the nose. That thing's getting dropped just a little bit on this this lap times, and then it goes Valentino up underneath him. Yo! Oh, that was very great. Sete oh, goes Sete. second. Here I am saying Sete's getting dropped, and then he comes up from behind him. And Max Biaggi's going to put it up alongside and pass Sete Jibba now side by side. We're only completing lap four of 28 here in South Africa. Max Biaggi. Uh, whilst you were talking about the, the, the Michelin Taj, Randy, and the, the special new rear that Max Biaggi's got, I believe, looking at the, the pictures here, his corner speed is visually quicker than Valentino. Yeah, now again, getting back to this tyre, the, 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 the Michelin comes in. No, just somebody's coming in. Uh, hey, Ruben Zaus, I think, Randy. Max Biaggi yes, goes wide in the meantime. Zaus is in the pits. It's all going off here in South Africa. But whilst Max Biaggi has gone wide on that right-hander, it's given a chance for Valentino Rossi to make a little bit of a break. A little bit of a gift for Valentino here. The two Hondas. Look at Rossi sliding it there. That's the favourite spot on this track for that sort of action. Now, what Sete and Max could do with happening now is they just settle into a little rhythm and tow them each other back up to... You know, this is the other thing we talked about, Julian, is that the Honda boys are so close to one another that it's easy to trip each other up and let Valentino get ahead. And uh, But this is where, where Max closed up in onto uh, Valentino and, and pass him at the end of the back straight. And they're just going onto that back straight away. Let's see if Sete can tow on up. There's Max Biaggi going underneath Sete. And he does it. Makes it stick. Oh, we that's a again, quick. these two guys just need to settle the pace down and get back up to Valentino and hold on to it. Because if Valentino sees this gap opening when he gets his signboard, uh, that's going to give him a lot more encouragement to, pu to push at the beginning of this race. Randy, you and I were out on the inside of that quick right-hander at the end of the back straight yesterday morning. That's a quick, brave corner. Especially when you're going down that straightaway at uh, 280 kilometers per hour and you just bank off into there. Uh, it, it really is something, and it really is a special racetrack with so many right-hand corners leading onto the back straight and so many right-hand right corners leading to the penultimate corner where we see so many passes, of course. It's very much a right-handed racetrack, of course, and it's going to be that side of the tyre that's going to have a hammering come the end of the race, dependent upon the rider's pace. Yes. So, anyway, getting back to what Dupasquet is saying, this race is trying to, to break up my monotony here, but... You know, they were saying that the corner speed is much better. Now, we've seen the Yamaha uh, favor in terms of looking more like a 250 line. You know, the, the Honda's always been a bike that's been sliding around, and there's Valentino sliding his Yamaha around. But uh, it, it's, it seems to be more of a 250-type line bike. And so I asked Dupasquet, I said, is that tire, is, to me, has got, with more side grips, got to favor somebody who has more like a 250 style. And he said, this is not our... Uh, plan to, to develop a tire for 250. It's a, it's a plan to develop a tire that gives these bikes more grip. We know that the manufacturers can put out up to 300 horsepower if they really wanted to, but we, we, we refuse to give up on development. And the tire that you're seeing out there now is probably an old tire, he says, because we're continually developing. When I asked where, where the dimensions were bigger, he said, I will not give that away because, of course, we're in deep competition with the other manufacturers. Least of all Bridgestone tires who will be on podiums this year. 
Rossi leads this Grand Prix from Max Biaggi. Third is Sete Gibernau. Fourth is Hayden. Fifth is Edwards. Sixth, Malandri. Seventh, Caparossi. Eighth, Alex Barros. Kenny Roberts Jr. in ninth position. Nakano, Tamara, Abe. Neil Hodgson in 15th place. Troy Bayliss in 16th position. Shaky Byrne, Jeremy McWilliams, 17th and 18th places respectively. We are on lap seven of 28 here in South Africa. There are your leading trio. Rossi from Biaggi, from Sete Gibernau, but it's the man in the middle in on the yellow bike, Max Biaggi, who has just set the fastest lap of this race so far. The dice behind Hayden and Edwards, the Caparossi, Bellas, Melandri, Roberts dice, covered by a very small amount of time. That's the big fight on track, but here's the tension, here's the interest, and we're going to take a very short commercial break and come back and see how Motor Grand Prix pans out in its first race of the year here to South Africa. Max Biaggi has taken the lead ahead of Valentino Rossi, tipping it into the quick right-hander at the back of the, uh, the, the far straight. He's tipped it in and he's made it stick. Further around the lap, Valentino Rossi had a big bobble out of the final corner. We now join the leaders going down the back section. Max Biaggi ahead of Valentino Rossi. Rossi looked over his shoulder to make sure that he was going to fight only one person, i.e. Max Biaggi ahead of him. And Valentino Rossi's going up on the inside and barging through with the Golwa's Yamaha. Rossi retakes the lead that Max Biaggi had for only one lap. Gibbonau third, Nicky Hayden fourth position. A quick Neil Hodgson report, he's in 14th place in front of Bayless and Byrne. Okay guys, that last lap, I don't know if you picked it up. Junior's in, Kenny Roberts Jr.'s in 21st place. Uh, and uh, looks like the team is moving from the wall. Our cameras haven't picked up anything, but I'll try to find out down here. Problems for Kenny Roberts Jr. He's uh, way down the order already. As we look back and see Valentino Rossi barging his way through ahead of Max Biaggi. We're on lap 9 of 28 here in South Africa. And is Sete now reeling the pair of them in? Well, if they're bar having a barging match like that, it's bound to give a few tenths to Sete and he's taken advantage. Rossi leads Biaggi and Sete right there. OK, an update on Kenny Roberts. And turn 13, whichever one that is, you guys don't have to count out on your map there, Toby. Uh, that's where he stopped. It just the uh, bike has stopped. So he's way out the back of the circuit, so uh, no more running for Kenny Roberts. That's a shame, but uh, I hope that uh, the Roberts machine has not bef had the same problem as befell John Hopkins in practice, because Hopkins had an engine blow up and put oil on the track on Friday. Oh, a little bit of dirt being kicked up by Max Biaggi rather than Rossi, I feel. as they Max is really pushing it to the max, isn't he, here? He's using, as you can see, that thing seems to carry more corner speed Unusually, Valentino's bike seems to be moving around a lot more underneath him than we used than we used to when he was on a Honda. He's obviously just having to cope. He's doing what he has to to keep the Yamaha moving at this pace. Caparossi ahead of Marco Malandri further down the order. Meanwhile, we come over the line. Sete Gibernau, third position on the number 15 movie star Honda. The victor here last year ahead of Hayden Edwards Barros. Caparossi, as I said, is now ahead of Malandri. Malandri, the second Yamaha only to Valentino Rossi. And let us not forget, Melandri didn't do the last race of last year after that crash he had in Australia. So he's uh, back on true Melandri form. Good, good to see. And the gap back to Sete was given as only 0.8 of a second. That's Ooh. Biaggi to Sete that time round. So he is not over and done with. Great shame about Big. Suzuki. That tight line Max holds there while Rossi's sliding. Really nice, huh? Beautiful to watch. It's really, really clean. Uh, the, the race pace, guys, it's just, it's just incredible. I mean, the last lap was a 33.5. We know Max has set the, the record already with a 33.4, but the pace is just incredible. Set the German out at a 33.7. And Max, of course, matched the 33.5. Uh, of the world champion and head of him, Valentino Rossi. Going onto the back straightaway, this is where the Honda eats up that Yamaha. Let's see if he can do it. There's a great shot. Oh, look. Yeah, on the brakes a bit early there, maybe, Randy. Yeah, yeah, you know, things are sussing out. He knows that Valentino can stay with him. So now he's just sussing out whether Yamaha is good. We already know it's good on the brakes going into that last corner, the second to last corner. The, the leading three riders have got the same compound of front tyre. The difference with the rear tyres 
they've all got the same, except Sete Gibbonau, who's got a slightly harder rear, as opposed to the more medium compound rear tyres of Valentino Rossi and Max Biaggi. So it's really only that rear of Sete. We'll see how that one pans out towards the end of the race by virtue of it being a harder compound. That's, that's exactly when it becomes an issue. Will Sete have more rubber to call upon than the front two at the moment? Right now, they just pulled another tenth out of Sete. He's one second down. Uh, that's not a lot, but around this racetrack, it's very, very difficult to make up this time. Uh, he cannot let Valentino and Max get away. He cannot afford any more time. Talking about the Yamahas, Randy, Arve and Checa, 11th and 12th. They're behind Shinya Nakano on the Kawasaki. So there's only one Yamaha in this race at the moment, and you're looking at it very closely from Max Biaggi. It's all over the back of Valentino Rossi, Max Biaggi on the yellow Camel Honda number three. Almost a bit of, and I don't like saying this because Randy's the expert here, so listen up. Is there a bit of desperation, or was there a little bit of desperation in Max's riding early on in this race? Do you think he's calmed down a bit now? Yes, he has, and uh, the thing that, that surprises me, we've seen Valentino look over his shoulder quite a lot. This was very unusual. Uh, you know, he, he's sussing out where the Honda is better. He, I'm sure that Valentino in a few corners is pushing it very hard, then takes a look over his shoulder and says, no, nope, I haven't dropped him yet. Max Biaggi just settled down in the pace. He knows that the tires and everything of, of the essence, we've got 18 laps left to go. Uh, it's soon it'll be 17 as he just finished this lap. And still the real, no, excuse me, the reigning world champion leads the first Grand Prix of 2004. He leads Max Piaggi by a quarter of a second according to our timing monitor. It really is an academic number but it, they've never been further apart than that since, what, the first couple of corners. They've never been further apart from each other's necks. There's Kenny Roberts Jr. coming into the garage just catching up with uh, Dad. Finding out what's gone wrong with the machine. Kenny Roberts out a couple of laps ago. Yes, the pair of the, these two, Rossi and Biaggi, been at each other for now years, actually. They had that famous punch-up at Catalonia back in 2000. And uh, the, one of the, the, the theories of Valentino Rossi moving from Honda to Yamaha is, I can win on that. Max only won a couple of the races, you know, all that kind oh, of press the, 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 all, all that motivation, all yes. those strange, uh, all the motivation that a sportsman needs to keep them taking risks at this level. And Satish Yibonet was only 0.8 behind Biaggi last time, so Satish certainly hanging in there, he's not being dropped, but he doesn't appear to be able to make that jump to get right with him. Oh, look at that. Using all the road or what? With the rear stepping out on the kerb. <laughs> Doesn't bear thinking about. Toby and Julian, I've got uh, Ruben Schaus, a man who finished second to uh, Neil Hodges in the World Championship and World Superbike. You're in the pit. Tell us what happened to your bike. Nothing. I went out. Uh, the bike seems perfect the first laps and something happened. An electronic, electronic problem. I don't know. I was, I was in the third group. I had a good start and my rhythm for the race was, was correct. This morning, yesterday, I show up everybody that I could do this. And I'm I'm uh, I'm unhappy right now, you know, for me for the team because first exit we only wanted uh, experience and feelings. But, well, racing is racing. Now that we're in the garage taking a look at this race, what do you think? I think I was able to finish in top top six, top eight, you know, because my room was good. Uh, just yesterday I did a mistake with a soft tire that cost me that place in the grid. But well, first race, so. Many, many races to go still. I'm sure you're looking forward to Jerez. Thank you, man. Cheers. Ciao. Ruben using one of his eight languages there to talk to Randy Bamola. <laughs> yes, Zaus falling in final qualifying yesterday. As he touched on there while sp speaking to Randy, the rear was so grippy it just pushed the front. And that's that's been a problem that has befallen some of the riders here this weekend, hasn't it, Randy? Copperossi saying as such after Friday first qualifying, the new qualifying tyres coming out of Clermont-Ferrand and the Michelin factory so grippy they can cope with all of the Copperossi Ducati power, so much so that it pushes the front. Look at this, look at that Honda close up to the Yamaha on that straight. What you were referring to earlier. Earlier, Randy just eats it up. There's another bike come down pit lane, Randy. I just missed who it was. No, that's a 250 from uh, number. That's Pedrosa's bike. They're pushing the 250s down. Okay. There's some. Okay. No, the and oh, there is. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Toby. It's already past me. It's the WCM bike of uh, Fabrizio. And still, this intense battle at the front of the field carries on. They, you know, they say they're a quarter of a second apart, it's nothing like it. It's a tenth, it's under a tenth. 
and Rossi looks to me to be really having to force that machine to fit. He's wrestling it in places and the contrast with Max Biaggi's style is wonderful, isn't it, Randy? Max on rails, carrying such corner speed. And the race is so close, uh, not only between these two guys, but Seti Jimena, all of them, 33.9, 33.9, 33.9. What a fantastic thing. These helicopter views really gives us an inside also up above there as they exit this right-hand corner. Well, we're staying with the leaders for obvious reasons, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Valentino Rossi moving from Honda to Yamaha with Max look Biaggi. This, look at this. Look at the power. That is so close racing. We're, we're going to keep an eye on this. I mean, it's breathtaking stuff. We could commentate about this for, for weeks. Here is Michel Fabrizio off the WCM Harris hybrid machine, the four-cylinder bike in the garage. We've got to give a shout-out, Jules, for the other. Shaky Byrne, 16th position, and Jeremy McWilliams just behind him in 17th. Otherwise, I've got to clip round the air from Mrs. McWilliams. Not a pleasant experience. And now, fourth place is now Alex Barros, so we have hardly mentioned. He's got in front of Aidan Edwards, Capirossi and Melandri. Melandri now being tailed off a bit from that group, but Alex Barros has done some work to get up to fourth place. As we take br take some a breather and look back at Max Biaggi closing in. Don't forget, it's a very wide-angle lens you're looking through. Is that awesome or what? I yeah. mean, it's just a sheer enjoyment to see, be able to see the two different lines, the different intake in terms of uh, where they're braking. And it really is deceiving, as you were saying, Julian, with the camera, because they are such a uh, optical illusion there. Yeah, but also what you can see there is that Max is closing not just with the accordion effect of the slower speed of the corner at the apex, guys, but the fact that if he's got this special tyre, it really is working to Max's advantage, the way that he can close up with the thing cranked over. Just yet, the corner speed is carrying with the, with the thing over so far carrying that sort of speed. Quite amazing. We're on lap 15 of Africa's Grand Prix. Look at the lead that this trio has. Rossi ahead of Max Biaggi by two bike lengths. We're riding with the second position Italian right now as we stream onto the back straight. Spaniard Sete Gibanao is in third position. Then there is eight seconds back to Alex Barros in fourth position ahead of his teammate Nicky Hayden fifth. Colin Edwards sixth. Caporossi seventh. Tamada leading Bridgestone rider in eighth position but it's just those seven Michelin tires ahead of him well, Marco Melandri ninth Norikabe what a run in tenth position he's got in front of the car now that's probably uh, pleasing him no end let's, that's see what, a... let's see what this lap time is Toby 33.6 33.6 33.7 incredible Valentino's really pushing and keeping his head down because he wants to try to break that spirit of Max Biaggi, but Max isn't being broken, is he? No, not at all, and nor is the spirits of Alex Barros here in fourth position ahead of his teammate, Nicky Hayden. Then you got Colin Edwards, so you got the Brazilian, you got then two Americans, number four, Repsol Honda, number 69, Repsol Honda, and number 45 of Colin Edwards. That's fourth, fifth, and sixth positions, respectively. Back with the leaders. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, Max sliding it a bit there. That's not a sight you see very often. Randy, you rode all these machines at the end of last season. You rode the Yamaha, the Honda, the Kawasaki, the Ducati. Of course, the Yamaha here and now on April the 18th is a very different animal compared with the Yamaha that you rode last November. I think the one that they, I rode in November is in a museum somewhere. <laughs> yes, yes, and that's no joke, ladies and gentlemen. But the, the, the sheer rideability of the Honda is, um, is incredible. Well, it goes to show you really how good Valentino is because if you look back to where the other Yamaha guys are, it's ninth place with Marco Melandri, Norik Abe is down in 10th, Carlos Cech is in 12th, and, uh, uh, you know, it's just incredible what Valentino's done in that, that team. You know, he's so confident. And let me tell you something right now. He's getting an advantage right here over Max. Uh-oh, Neil Hodgins in. We just saw the bike go down underneath our Comedy Box window, Randy, so both the Valentino Ducatis back in the hutch. I'm assuming it's a similar problem. 
given that Neil and the bike both looked totally undamaged when they came down pit lane. Back at the front, Toby. We are indeed, but Max Biaggi is battling to get in front ahead of Valentino Rossi. We're on board with Nicky Hayden, the 2002 AMA Superbike champion with Honda, came to MotoGP last year as a rookie and got a true podium in Australia. And if you can get a podium there first time, not a bad place to start taking trophies home from. I know that he got a technical podium at Mategi a couple of weeks before, but that was uh, full of controversy. Just a little bit. You can see the work Alex Barros has done there. Ninth on lap two. Now up to fourth place. Past some good guys to get there. Capi Rossi, Edwards and his Somebody's teammate. Somebody's gone down, I think. Yes, yes I saw Marks on the road. Somebody's gone down and it's Alex Hoffman for the second time in 24 hours. Julian Hoffman goes down the road. I saw a puff of dust from underneath Barros' wheel. It was obviously a piece of, of tarmac that had been chewed up. Obviously, so just two high-speed crashes in a 24 hours for Alex Hoffman. That's not what you need. Well, I tried to go into the Antien garage, and for the first time, everybody's been uh, kind of pushed out, and the doors are going down a little bit, so they can take a look at uh, the situation. There was some uh, smoke coming off the left-hand side of the bike, is of Neil's bike when he was in there, and of course, the look on his face, of course, was with this disgust. Uh, I can imagine. I can imagine Neil normally holds a real good temper. But look at these fast. They're trading fastest lap. Randy. Three, two. You know, it, again, Valentino knows what he has to do. Uh, he's got to try to put the heat on because there's 11 laps to go and he doesn't want to battle in between. And Max is just hanging in there. Let me tell you, Valentino's got a bit of an edge. As they exit the corner, he seems to have a little bit better drive as he picks up the machine. A 1 minute 33.258 for Max Biaggi, slightly slower for Valentino Rossi, but the pair of them, the lap time that they have just done to complete lap 17 of 28, would have put them on the second row of the grid. <laughs> Mamma mia! You know, just to give a comparison, Seth, they did a 34-0 that lap. And then, of course, Barros is at the 34-2. It's just these two guys in this race that we've seen all the whole time. Let's see if Valentino uh, and the, how that Yamaha again matches up, but they go down the straightaway again. Let's hope, hopefully we get a shot of that. Here yeah. they go on to the back straight. You know, in all great sport, Randy, not just motorsport, motorcycle racing, the most memorable moments come from great confrontations between great individuals. And I, that's what we're looking at here. The... Uh, the two best, with due respect to Seti Gibanao and all the rest of the guys out there, we're looking at the two best motorcycle races in the world at the moment, well, going at it head to head. Absolutely, and, and again, Valentino's just got his head down and really pushing hard, knowing he's got uh, these 10 laps to go as they cross the line. And let's see the lap time, 33.4 and a 33.3, because Max is playing catch up all the time. A little bit wide, let him see it drop back. Let's see the acceleration, we go down the straightaway. Again, it's very deceiving in this area. The guys are working really hard to keep this bike going from left and right in this braking area through the bumpy section. These two guys, as you say, Julian, battling hammer and tongs. Uh, 250 champion, the pair of them. But 125 and multiple 500 and then Moto GP champion, of course, for Valentino Rossi. And without letting the cat out of the bag, we've seen some tremendous racing already today in the 125 and 250 cc races. But we've got the best race still to finish here on British Eurosport Moto GP. We've got under nine laps remaining here at the circuit of Velcom in South Africa. Valentino Rossi continues to lead this motorcycle Grand Prix ahead of Max Biaggi. Technically, it's just over a tenth of a second, but as you can see, it's not even two bike lengths as they charge down from 170 miles an hour to the slowest corner on this racetrack. First gear all the way down the gearbox, accelerating hard in first up to second gear. Coming into this final corner, the left-hander that will see them finish lap 20 of 28. Over the line they go. Who is holding what back? Who is stretching what to the limit? Every time for the past four or five laps, Max has just been a hundredth of a second quicker than Valentino on the clocks. Whether that means anything, I don't know. What is absolutely for sure is that Max's bike looks a lot happier, a lot steadier. It's staying in straight lines compared to Valentino. But then, of course, that's their styles, isn't it? Could just be a matter of rider preference. 
but you see the exit of some of those corners. He really pulls out. He really pulls out. And then Max has got to play catch up going into the corner. Then he runs a little bit wide. Watch the exit here. Val oh, Valentino just sliding it all the way around that corner. Just incredible. Ma Max is closing back up on the left-hander as they get ready to go down that back straight. Let us not forget there are other riders in this race. We're glued to the front, and why not indeed? This is, this is Marco Malandri and uh, battling with Carlos Checa, 10th and 11th positions. Now this is real time telemetry. This is Carlos Checa. We see the gears that Carlos is utilizing with his Fortuna Yamaha M1. Second gear, it's a reverse gearbox to a road bike. So here we go, holding it in second gear through the left-hander. And he's gonna kick the lever down to go up the gearbox. They go third, fourth, fifth, and then he clicks it up to go down the gearbox, opposite to a road bike. For those of you who aren't motorcyclists, positive stop gearbox. It just moves up and comes back to its rest position. You don't have to, you don't have a gate as such on a motorbike. Uh, later in the season, we will see Alex Hoffman's Kawasaki. Oh, live does Carlos Checker go past his teammate, Marco Melandri, through the right-hander. And that's Shinya Nakano right on him. Yes, Alex Hoffman, we will have real-time revs per minute. And with Troy Bayliss, we should have real-time speed I being relayed. I can give you Alex Hoffman's real-time RPM at the moment, if you want. Zero. Not on screen, but I'm looking on the, uh, the data sheets, and Valentino's pulled out three-tenths of a second, nearly four-tenths of a second. Max has caught back one-tenth of that second, as we were looking with uh, the shifter and, of course, the camera view of uh, what Carlos Checa has. But... Uh, Really, I'm waiting for them to come down this back straight. We trace the leaders going underneath. Here they are. Underneath the bridge here. Now they're back together again. But at one stage, they had three tenths through the first split. If you look at page three, Tub, if you've got a page three up there, sure it, have. it gives the uh, riders uh, through the first section, the second section, and third section. In the first section, uh, Max lost three tenths. Well, he's made that gap up now. Let us not forget that the other people in this uh, Grand Prix, we've seen the battle down to sixth, but seventh is Loris Caparossi, eighth is Makoto Tamada, ninth is Norik Abe, and then we saw that battle between Cheka, Melandri, Nakano, 10th, 11th and 12th. Hopkins in 13th, Troy Bayliss in 14th. Shaky Byrne going to score a point, fingers crossed, for the reigning BSB British Superbike champion. And Jeremy McWilliams, 16th place. Team Roberts, Nobuatsu Aoki, the singleton bike in this race after Curtis Roberts went home on Friday evening. He is just outside the point, 17th. Oh, cynics like me who said that Arbe was lucky to get his ride can shut up, can't they? Because he's the second Yamaha ahead of Jekyll and Melandri. I'm standing at Decido Pons, of course, the owner of the Camel Honda Pond squad. Are you surprised to be the number one Honda right now? Well, of course not. Good. I'm not surprised. Uh, tell us how you're feeling. I, I know as the uh, race is going on, it's getting closer with only seven laps to go. Only six laps to go, yes. Really, it's very exciting because we we'll decided everything, I think, in the last two laps, no? I think Max and Valentino, they are doing a very fast race, even more, more than what we expected. And this is very hard for the tires, no? That's why only both of these riders can go to this rhythm. Unbelievable. Well, well, I hope to interview you as the top of the podium. I will hope to. Oh, he's oh, got he him. got him. He's got him. He's gone through on the back straight. Yeah. I have a feeling that Rossi might be playing a game. We've seen this before, haven't we, Julian and Randy? We've seen Rossi let somebody through, but of course what happened in Magell in uh, Catalonia, it didn't work. Exactly. Then he lost concentration behind Loris Caparossi. Exactly. It wasn't Max Biaggi he let through, was it? So we shall see on that one. It was just another it, breed of terrier. Here we here we go. And just he, breezes past Randy. When you, when you take a look at Valentino's head, if we get a replay of that again, he was kind of looking to his right already uh, as they entered that. And uh, now he's going to get a good view, of course, of what Max has got. Now, if Max can, if Max was holding back anything at all, he'd be wise right now to keep his head down until the checker flag. To go for it. Yes, because Absolutely. there's very, very limited places where you can pass. The one thing that we know is that tight right, the penultimate corner before the uh, finish straight and left uh, is where everybody's been trying to do a pass. We've seen Valentino pass Max numerous of times after the pass of uh, Max going down that back straightaway. So, as Cedar was just saying on the pit wall, it's the last two laps. And let us not forget that Valentino Rossi lost the 2002 race here 
on that penultimate right-hander. Guys, when Toru Ukawa goaded in one way, then the other, and it was a flick left, flick right, and Toru Ukawa came over the line, the victor, on his then number 11, Repsol Honda. So, yes, can Max go for it? Difficult one to call, isn't it, Randy? I mean, from a racer's point of view, from your viewpoint, Ross is going to be just processing the information that he can see, but likewise, Max is going to be feeling nervous. This is the area where, where, where Valentino has been a little bit better than the Honda Pons bike. Going into this uh, corner, Max has gone a little bit wide. Nope. <laughs> well, the camera's views, on-bike camera views, are, are very, very difficult to tell uh, when you're riding there. But uh, that's where Valentino's looking at uh, taking this away from him. When that will happen, I don't know. Also, Valentino seeing the acceleration of the Honda, the V5 Honda, in front of that Yamaha. And you can see Max has opened up just a bit of a gap through this first split. You'll watch the first split on page three. Last time it was 0.2 of a second. They're getting ready to go through it. Yep, and Max was quicker than Valentino by just under a tenth last time round, but no real change in the race pace for many laps. Well, as Cena was saying, nobody dreamed it would be this quick, and uh, only these two are able to do it, and uh, Max seems to be pulling a little bit of a gap here and there. Look at, look at the gap through this section of the racetrack, and this is again where Max was a bit better through this left kink and onto another straightaway before the series of rights. You see them going through this left, and then a fast straightaway. The only thing that can happen to Max Biaggi in less than three and a half laps remaining in this race is that if he's absolutely got that throttle twisted right round, is that he makes a mistake, because or as Valentino Rossi is going to just dig so deep. Who is on the limit? We just don't know. Rossi's got a good run out of here, uses all of the curb and Look then some. power, even in the draft of the Honda. The thing is, Valentino's sussing things out, of course. Uh, the other thing is, it's, it's exactly a mirror image of what we saw when Valentino was leading. You saw uh, Va Valentino go pull just a little bit down these straightaways and then, of course, Max entering the corner had to let the brakes off and dive up and, and, and try to get close that gap. You can see with this overhead camera shot, watch as they exit the last corner. Watch that Honda out accelerate the Yamaha. And it's also, Randy, a question of positioning your position, your 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 bike on the racetrack for a track position, two or three corners from home, because it's not easy through the last couple of corners. You've got to be brave or mad or both. Okay, 0.2 of a second as it crossed the line that time. Max Biaggi did a 33.7 and Valentino 33.6, and it's just this accordion effect that we see. Uh, again, look at oh, it's just so close, and uh, there's a lapped rider coming up in the view. Let's see, he just looked over his shoulder, so they'll both get by him, I'm sure, through this long ride. He's Italian. It's, it's Fabrizio on the WCM uh, doing the right thing, keeping well out of the way. And watching his two fellow countrymen disappear at an astonishing rate into the distance. Fabrizio having been into the pits and come back out again, so WCM getting a few more miles underneath their bike. The, the, this is the long right-hander, the series of right-handers going on to the back straightaway. Look at Valentino trying to close up to see what he can do. Does he get a run? Now watch the Honda. That's a big cloud of dust, that was. Now, this is the area where Valentino seems to be really good. Look at right here. Right through the section, through this next part of the right, he closes up. If Max goes to the left, Valentino will stay to the right. Oh, he's half wheeling, he's looking, he's looking, he's through, he's wide. Oh, he barges him, he pushes him. They were nowhere near the apex. Valentino, first gear, leaves a great big black line on the tarmac there. And now it's going to be a couple of pole position laps to the finish. Deep breath, stand by the extinguishers. Two laps to go. Yes, here we go, the Honda power. Rossi sliding across the nose of Biaggi. This could get ugly. That was less than the width of a cigarette paper between the rear of Valentino's Yamaha and the front tyre of Max Biaggi's Honda. My goodness me, this is going to be a belting couple of laps. They are absolutely on it now. I think the red mist is down over both visors. That was a really hard move Valentino put on there. Then they just had to drag race away from almost a standstill. Are we going to see a 32 this lap? You can't put it past these two. Through the right-hander. Valentino Rossi. Nervous moments. Not maybe for him. You've got to believe Max Biaggi is a little bit more nervous or is he angry to try and beat Valentino from day one of the 2004 They're both season. desperate. Yes. Yeah, there's no, I, don't think, I don't think there's any, any difference in the, the will to win of these two men. Because whatever the result is, first or second Valentino, Max or vice versa, 
they've shown that it's very, very close. Coming in the 2004 Carol. season. Oh, Rossi is absolutely on the limit. You, see, you see how fast Julian he, and Toby, he exited those double rights. He just tried to keep that gap because he knows that's where the Honda's passed him numerous times. He's got his head down with just about two and a quarter laps left to go. He's breaking him, although Max Biaggi closes up the accordion effect, maybe telling us a little bit of a lie there through the right-hander. We start the last lap of round one, MotoGP 2004. Valentino Rossi's got an advantage of just a couple more bike lengths than he had the last lap. It's point three of a second on that lap. The last two and a half miles to be completed here. Valentino Rossi, he won in Valencia. He was in Repsol Honda colors then with the big wig. But how can he do on the Goldwars Yamaha round one 2004? Well, it might be history, Toby. We'll get to that after the checkered flag. And Rossi, what, 33-3 to Biagi's 33-5 last time round. Has Max got anything left? Or has the crucial break been made? Boy, it's it's been made. There's a This is the next area. This long right leads on to a, a, a left-hand corner, which is a shorter straight than you think, before we do the series of those right-hand corners, Toby, which is detrimental for Max to be behind if he wants to get behind past. Valentino. Valentino Rossi had an advantage over Max Biaggi of 0.3 at the start line. It was 0.4 at the first intermediate split. We're coming up to the second intermediate split. Max Biaggi has closed a little into the tune of 500th of a second. But here are the quick rights, Randy. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to do it because Valentino's got this covered. Max is not close enough to, to go up underneath Valentino. Look at the gap there going into this wrong right. Valentino is really now showing all he has. And this is the section of the racetrack where Valentino's Yamaha has been so strong throughout all of the test sessions here. Does that, does that a mistake from Valentino? Max Biaggi gets a little closer. Max Biaggi's got to look up on the inside, but it's going to be do or die. Who can keep the smooth line through the final corner? Valentino Rossi moves to Yamaha and wins the race the first time out. He gets pole position. He wins the race. My goodness me, five world championships. <laughs> look at look at Biaggi's lap time, 33-2-0 on the last lap. Fastest lap of a race. And that's, didn't quite look at each other, but they shook hands. Jim and now gets...